All right, this bit.ly, um, the bit.ly slash learn 360 WB will get you to this um, slide deck. And in the slide deck has some uh, instructions for like um, the person that um, manages your Google domain if you want to access some of these that way. So there are good instructions in there. And if they have any questions, they can always just contact me. But Learn360 is our video streaming service that we pay for for our schools. And World Book Web is the online version of the encyclopedias. Same thing that ESU 8 um, purchases for our schools. And so this is a way that you can access them from home because it's a little bit different than how you would access them during um, the school day. And there's still great resources that you could be using. Um, all right, so the first one, World Book Web Online. Um, you would just put in World Book Online, and this is important. Now you have to use a login and password, and it's the same for everyone, for teachers, for students. It's just ESU8WB is the login, and the password is orders. And I'm going to take you out and show you what that looks like. Um, but once you've logged in, the difference now, it'll always say service unit eight. Before it said your school when you logged in at school because it was IP recognized. Um, so it just knew that you were at that location. But it's always going to say service unit eight, but you'll have the exact same features. So I'm just going to go out here, got to move my toolbar. And so it'll look like this when you go to just World Book Online, it comes up to the login. It's ESU 8 WB and orders is the password. Um, they don't want to sign in, sign in with Google or anything, create an account because they won't be able to access the ESU 8 materials. This is the only way to get to them. So once they do that, we'll see how fast my internet is. Um, so everything is there that was there before. Actually, this activity corner is brand new. I just saw it yesterday. I don't, I don't even know what it is. But if you've got young kids, there's the early world of learning. Um, and then these are your three levels of encyclopedias, the kids, the student, and the advanced. Now, if your kids are going to do research, um, like a, you're assigning a paper or something, it still works the exact same way. So if they would search something, and they want to save their research or they have created an account to save research here in the past, um, they still access that. So I'm gonna read this article on dogs. And I'm looking at it and I really like it. And so I wanna save it. Um, and so if I go to my research, Right here is where they would put in their email and create a password or create an account if they don't have one. If kids have already been in here like I have, I would go back to um, my login, my password, and I log in, and then I'm into my personal account. And you can see um, here are some of the research that I've already done. Um, I have several projects started here. I can go to my different projects, um, do my research, keep it in one spot. So that still works the same. When they first log in, they have to log in with the issue 8 WB, and it'll say service unit 8 here. But once they get inside, they can create their own account, or if they already have one, they can save their research that way. Any questions on the world book? There's that login. All right, the other um, resource that we have is Learn360, and it is videos on demand. And in the past, you've had to access it through Snap. And um, you can still, as a teacher, access it through Snap. Um, but you're, in order for your kids to access it, or if you want home access, um, there's a couple different uh, ways to do that. So as a teacher, I could still go to ESU8 webpage, or I would go to ESU8 webpage, um, click on Snap, um, log in, go to my Learn360, find my videos. And then when it comes to assigning it to kids, 
there's a couple different ways that can happen. And I'll go to the live one after I go through my slides. So um, this is the, the thing. If you are a G Suite for Education and you're using Google Classroom, I would suggest that you have um, your Google domain uh, administrator go through this, these steps right here. I'm gonna show you, it looks like this. They're all laid out. It tells them exactly how to go in, what to do, how to, um, basically they're authenticating um, so that the um, student doesn't have to use a password or a, a login to see the videos. Um, and so it's, it's a process. It's really not that difficult. I've had a couple schools walk through it, but I do have one slide that shows when you get here um, and you need this, this admin account and password, every district has a unique one. And then um, back on my slides, I put that if you get there, if you contact Linda Thompson or myself, we'll give that administrator, that, uh, that Google domain administrator, that um, login and password that's unique to that district. So what this means then, um, let me go to ESU8 while well, this is coming up, um, that if I would assign it through Google Classroom, then my students could click on the video and be able to watch it because the teacher is logged in and the student is logged in through Google Classroom and it's authenticated with Google Classroom, there isn't a password and um, login. So if a teacher, I would go to Snap, log in. If you don't know your Snap number, you just have to contact Linda or I. Once I'm here, um, oh, I have some overdue things. When I'm here, I would go into Learn360. And I find a video that I want. Um, let's see here. Harry, uh, here, let's talk about the, the virus. They've got one here on the virus by Slim Goodbody. Um, and so I decided this is a great video. I want to sign it to my kids. I can sign it through Google Classroom. Once I've authenticated and went through those steps or that process, so I would just click on here. My classrooms would, would come up. And um, I would, um, well, I would have to continue as me and log in. I'm not logged in, I guess. But then I could assign it to the classes that I want as an assignment or whatever. Um, but the other way I can do it, and I tested this with Katie yesterday, so this is to the best of my ability. If I go to the share here, I can get this link right here. I can copy it and send it to her. And um, she, because we have done the, the authentication, if I remember right, Katie, you just had to um, put in an email and it worked. Am I correct? I can't even remember now. Katie might not be there, but I can copy this and send it. And I had her um, use actually not even an ESU 8 um, Google email, um, and she was able to access that video. There is, if, if your kids are not able to access them and it gives them they want a pass key, that is also like a passcode. That's, we have a pass key that's unique to every district also that students would just have to put it in to be able to watch those videos from home. So the easiest way, and most all of our schools have a Google domain, is to do that authentication um, that's that list of instructions. And I would suggest that you would pass that on to your Google domain administrators if this is something that you want to use, because <clears throat> then if kids are logged in through their Google accounts, um, even if you don't use Google Classroom, they're still going to be able to just click on that video and watch it. Questions on um, either of those. And that's basically all I have. The only other things I'll direct you to is um, here I have our ESU8 YouTube channel. Everything that we've been doing 
um, and helping teachers with. We've tried to do tutorials that they need. It's all been put up here. So I leave that there. Um, please access that um, for anything you need. Also, my email is down there. Um, so that's available also. Uh, 